it sounds obvious, but sometimes it's not quite that blunt when you put it into practice. You know that everybody is unique and distinctive, that each person is different. I'm different than you are, you're different than I am, my wife's different than both of us. Each one of us has different gifts, abilities, understandings, experiences. We could be standing side by side and look at the same thing and get completely two different interpretations of it. We could actually see something together and not come up with the same conclusion. It's been proven even in a court of law how two witnesses can actually look at and not be accurate in what they thought they saw as opposed to what they saw or what really happened. So each one of us has a different perspective. We look at things differently, we react to things differently, and to put bluntly, God made us different. I like that. Now, sometimes people forget that because they don't have really quite the comprehension to say, you know, if you've got ten people and you're telling them all the same thing, you're going to get ten different perspectives. Ten different people are going to come up with slightly different, and that's kind of why we need the Holy Spirit, because the Spirit of God can take whatever the Word of God is and make it fit for each one of those people. Each one of them will hear something different, because they will hear according to what the Spirit of God says. Even Jesus said it, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God says. So it's really not about getting some good commentary, although those help for studying. It's really not about, you know, hearing the pastor speak and expecting everyone to be on the same page at the same time, because they're not. It's really about how God personally involves you in what he wants you to hear at the time that you hear it. I know for myself, there are lots of times that I would go to a Bible study at Chuck Smith's you know, church and, man, I'd be off on a tangent. He'd be saying something and all of a sudden he'd spark God in me and I'd be having my Bible open and it would be like, oh wow, so I'd start flipping open and look at some of my Bible, wow, you know, and I'd start going through it, you know, and get into this whole study and not really know exactly what Chuck had taught. Well, you know, I heard it, but bluntly, <coughs> God had applied what it was that he needed in order to inspire me. And that's kind of what God wants to do with you today. Wherever you are, however you are, and whatever you're doing, God wants to inspire you for the day because he can use anything, literally, to inspire you to turn the attention of your spirit back to God. He can capture your imagination. He can help you to hear better. He can develop your sense of sight so that you would turn to God and look to Him for your answers and your needs individually as you have needed them. So you know there's no one set patterned answer really except to turn to God in the scriptures. The scriptures say, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not in your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. Not me, not some promise that you just, you know, it's well Spurgeon I appreciate, but it's not some kind of checkbook that you just automatically write in your name and you get whatever it is that you put your name in. No, that's not quite the way it works. God still applies it the way He chooses. That's why at the end of prayer, you know, a lot of people add that part that says, uh, not my will, but thy will be done. Because God might give you what you want, and it might not be the best for you. might be a learning lesson. So, as God applies His Word to you individually, then you're not so much wrapped up in this corporeality of all the people coming out like cookie cutters. If you're not getting it, something's wrong and you're not getting it. You need to be in the Word with God alone, figuring it out what it is he's all about because he loves you and he's got something in store for you today matter of fact it's pretty important and that's why he wrote it down so you wouldn't forget often 
we all have challenges in our life that we need to create a time and a place where we can meet God to address those challenges that we're facing so we can say, uh, God, help. I'm, I don't have enough money. God, help. I just got evicted. God, what do you want me to do? I just wound up losing my car. God, I lost my job. What do you want me to do? You see, it's easy to see a need and to think you're supposed to fulfill it, but sometimes God wants you to ask Him first before you go and do what you think you ought to do as opposed to what He's directing you to do. Triumph over troubles. Moreover, let us also be full of joy now and let us exalt and triumph in our troubles and rejoice in our sufferings knowing that the pressures and afflictions, even the hardships, produce patience and unanswering, unswerving endurance. Romans 5.3 Some days it seems that everything goes wrong. One thing after another. And another. And another. And another. Don't just talk to yourself saying, I just can't take any more of this. I've had it. That's it. It's over. Don't think that way. It's not over. God is showing you something. Don't talk to your friends saying, I just can't put up with any more of this. I've had it. That's it. I'm done. No, you're not. God is the one who's in control. You're not. You're learning. Don't struggle with the same test day after day. Instead, talk back to the devil as Jesus did and remind him that God is in control. It's not you telling the devil what to do, but it's God reminding you that he's in control. If you feel your peace and joy slipping away, <coughs> talk out loud to God and have something to say about it. Ask him for his help and he'll remove all the obstacles. You can say bluntly, God, what I cannot see, I pray you'll take care of for me. But what I can see, God, help me to do according to what you want me to do. Whenever you find yourself in some spiritual battle and you think that you have to challenge some authority or principality or power, let the Lord rebuke the enemy for you. When God is the one doing it, he removes all obstacles from your path and will cause your feet to be ordered by him and directed so you don't stumble. Because, you see, we do have an adversary, and we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and spiritual wickedness in high places. So sometimes, it's not about just you being the dumb dumb today, but sometimes it's about being smart enough to know, ooh, that don't seem right. Maybe I better ask God to make it right. You see, what the enemy may have meant for evil, God can make into good. All we need to do is turn to Him like we should and let Him accomplish His will as we just acknowledge the day, no matter what comes and what may, that His will be done now and forever and ever. And whenever we do that, whenever we get back to recognizing we're not in control, but He is, then you'll find that God works in mysterious ways that always seem to come out with you <laughs> leading the way and not behind.